everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos I've done in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least watch the unboxing video just to get an overview of the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle. Today, very excited to start bag number 14. Why? Because this is the halfway point. Once I've like completed a thousand pieces from this section, I'm officially halfway done this jigsaw puzzle. Crazy. I'm a bit worried about this section. Now the funny thing, I'm gonna mix it up. It's bag 14, but it's labeled section 13. It is one large, beautiful, painting by another artist that we've not seen before on this channel in this series. I believe this is during the French Revolution. Don't quote me on that yet. As with the other videos, I'll do a voiceover talking about the painting, talking about the artist, giving you a bunch of information. I think I'm going to have to watch the musical Les Miserables on repeat while I'm building this. It just feels fitting. Um, I am worried about this section. I think it's going to be a bit tricky, a bit harder. It's very much painterly, but it's got some defined lines. I think I gotta go by color, like sort out the blues. Obviously the red will be a bit easier. There's some whites, there's uh, flesh tones. Uh, I don't know. I'll just do what I can. The border looks simplish enough. I think those pieces will sort out easily. I don't think the border will be too bad. And I don't think there's too many background beige pieces. There could be one row of beige all around each side, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Now, if I pull out my large panoramic poster here of the entire jigsaw puzzle, you'll see from the start we've completed nine full sections and then the bottom one, that was the last video, we are now here up to the middle section. Yeah, and then the reason why it's bag 14, like I said, I'm gonna mix them up, is because I've completed three bookshelf sections already. I only have one more bookshelf section to go. Oh, I'm really excited about the next section above this because it looks very colorful. But wish me luck, I don't know, I just feel this is gonna be a bit tricky. Enjoyable, but tricky, and I can't wait to hear about the history of it. I do think it's during the French Revolution. What do you think? Leave a comment below and then we'll enjoy the voiceover together and see if I'm right or wrong. So, for the love of puzzles, let's get to working on bag number 14, the halfway mark, section 13, as we travel around art. There is only one painting in this section of the puzzle, La Liberté Guidant le Peuple, which translates to Liberty Leading the People. It's by Eugène Delacroix. The painting is sometimes wrongly thought to depict the French Revolution of 1789. It actually commemorates the July Revolution of 1830, which toppled King Charles X. It was painted in the autumn of that year, and it's very large, at 2.6 meters by 3.25 meters in dimension. It is currently on display in the Louvre in Paris, France. Eugène de la Croix was a French Romantic artist regarded from the outset of his career as the leader of the French Romantic school. He took for his inspiration the art of Rubens and painters of the Venetian Renaissance with an attendant emphasis on color and movement rather than clarity of outline and carefully modeled form. In a letter to his brother dated the 21st of October 1830, he wrote, my bad mood is vanishing thanks to hard work. I've embarked on a modern subject, a barricade. And if I haven't fought for my country, at least I'll paint for her. The painting was first exhibited at the official Salon of 1831. Now I wanna make a side note about this Salon. I've seen it pop up when I've done research on other paintings. It is sometimes also referred to as the Paris Salon. Beginning in 1667, it was the official art exhibition of the Académie des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Académie des Beaux-Arts, that's the Academy of Fine Arts. Between 1748 and 1890, it was arguably the greatest annual or biannual art event in the Western world. From 1881 onward, it had been managed by the Société des Artistes Français, which is the Society of the French Artists. Now getting back to the painting, 
Delacroix depicted liberty as both an allegorical goddess figure and a robust woman of the people. The mound of corpses and wreckage acts as a kind of pedestal from which liberty strides barefoot and barebreasted, out of the canvas and into the space of the viewer. The Phrygian cap she wears had come to symbolize liberty during the first French Revolution of 1789. The painting has been seen as a marker to the end of the Age of Enlightenment, as many scholars see the end of the French Revolution as the start of the Romantic era. The fighters are from a mixture of social classes, ranging from the bourgeoisie represented by the young man in a top hat, a student from the prestigious École Polytechnique wearing the traditional bicorn, to the revolutionary urban worker as exemplified by the boy holding pistols. What they have in common is the fierceness and determination in their eyes. Aside from the flag held by Liberty, a second minute tricolore, three color, can be discerned in the distance flying from the towers of Notre Dame. The French government bought the painting in 1831 for 3,000 francs, with the intention of displaying it in the throne room of the Palais du Luxembourg, the Luxembourg Palace, as a reminder to the, now this is in quotes, citizen king, Louis Philippe, of the July Revolution through which he had come to power. So I guess the July Revolution toppled King Charles X and then Louis Philippe came to power. Okay. Now this plan did not come to fruition and the canvas hung in the palace's museum gallery for a few months before being removed due to its inflammatory political message. After the June Rebellion of 1832, wow, they've had like lots of revolutions and rebellions, it was returned to the artists. So Delacroix was permitted to send the painting to his aunt named Félicité for safekeeping. That's a huge painting to move around. I wonder where, where she was and how they transported it. That would be interesting to know. It was exhibited briefly again in 1848 after the Second Republic was established following the revolution of that year. Oh my goodness, okay, there's another one. And then it went to the Salon of 1855. Wow, okay, let's keep all those uh, revolutions and rebellions straight. But we know that in 1874, the painting entered the permanent collection of the Musée du Louvre in Paris at the Louvre Museum. Liberty leading the people is considered to be a Republican and anti-monarchist symbol, and thus was sometimes criticized, especially by royalists and monarchists. And she's finally done. Oh, this section of the puzzle. I knew it was going to be difficult and it was definitely, definitely tricky and difficult. 19 hours and 34 minutes, which is the exact same time that it took me to do section 12. You know, the one with the girl with the disheveled hair, La Scap Scapigliata, I believe. Oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. They both took the exact same amount of time. 
I realize I'm probably not down to the second and I'm probably a few minutes off on my estimations, but it's very close. It definitely was a tricky, difficult section of the puzzle to do. I love the frame, very nice. The background beige pieces <laughs> didn't phase me at all. I'm used to them now. I've even come to realize where to expect false fits. There's like two pieces along that left edge and like three or four pieces along this top edge that I know they're very similar in cut. And so I may, you know, have trouble placing pieces next to them because I have them in the wrong spot. But after doing 14 bags, I've realized that so that it doesn't phase me or bother me anymore. Now, what you'll see, a few things that I did to try to help me do this puzzle. I started by color. I did the reds, the blues, the white, and in fact, the sky wasn't all that difficult to do. But very early on, you're going to notice that I did separate the pieces by shape as I was doing subsections of the puzzle. So even when I got to like the beiges and whatnot and the kind of flesh tones, I did separate the pieces by shape and that did help. Another thing that I did, I went online and I found a nice big image of the painting that I could zoom in and look for details. The only problem with that is those details don't show up on this puzzle. So although it made me appreciate the painting a lot more, um, it didn't help me assemble the painting, <laughs> the puzzle quicker. I did go and look at other sections of the puzzle that I had completed. So when I was working, say in this down corner here, I'd look at another section of the puzzle and I'd go, okay, where are the, what I call the specialty pieces, the no prongs, one prongs, adjacent ones, or three prongs, four prongs. And I tried to place them in first because there's so few of those. And then that just left me the standard two prong pieces to have to deal with. That maybe saved me overall, I don't know, an hour perhaps of time, not a huge time save, but it helped and it encouraged me. At some point, it was funny because I would have a piece that would have like a distinct bit of red or white and I'd go, I should know where this piece goes. There's only so many places it can go. I couldn't figure it out. And then even when I got down to say like the last 20 pieces of the main part of the painting, I was like, okay, this should go quick. I should be able to figure out exactly where each piece goes. No, I still had to try them multiple times. Boy, she was difficult. And yeah, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful painting, lots of history. Learned a lot of interesting stuff about the various French revolutions over the years. So it's always a joy. You know, once you complete a puzzle that is so difficult, it feels very rewarding. So I, in the end, I really did enjoy it, but she, oh, this Liberty lady, she was tough, that's for sure. Now, the next section of the puzzle, I'm very excited to do very different from this section. There's three paintings, one's bright, colorful, geometric. One looks to have like an interesting story behind it. I think there's a couple of uh, maybe a new artist or two in that one as well. So I'm looking forward to doing something a little di bit different than this one. Looking at the remaining sections that I have to do in this jigsaw puzzle, I don't think any will be as difficult as this one. Now, I hope I didn't jinx myself by saying that, <laughs> but I think the, all the others will be pretty good. And we're over the halfway mark. We have completed now 28,000 pieces. So we're well, we're just over halfway. I'm so happy and we're getting there. We're getting it done. So thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao.